Welcome to the studio again. Uh, this is another DAS art project that I have developed. It is called a resin image lift. What we're going to do is encase an inkjet print in resin so that it can be shaped into other objects. And this is an example of a wrist cuff that I've made with this process. The image that you need has to be printed on the DOS premium transfer film. When you print your image, make sure you touch both sides with a damp finger and print on the side that feels sticky. That way your ink will not run off. Uh, that has happened to a few people where they're printing on the wrong side of the film. So this is the ink side of the film and that is my uh, dragon from the Galapagos Islands that is uh, been printed on the Canon 6450 printer using pigment inks and you must use a photo black ink. Do not use matte black inks. I'll set that aside. You need a few tools and a very level working surface. Um, I have a sheet of low iron um, glass here that I have leveled and you need to check the level in all directions to make sure that your resin is not going to flow off the page and onto the table. I like to keep my glass clean so I've placed a piece of plastic on top of it. Now the right amount of resin for a 8x10 is to fill two uh, paper, um, these little condiment cups that you can get from a restaurant supply store. Each one of these is one ounce. We'll use one ounce of resin and one ounce of the hardener and that is the perfect amount to coat one 8x10 print this size. If you are going to be working smaller and you want to do a 5x7 like this, then you would use these half ounce containers and you'll use one container of each the resin and the hardener to make just enough to cover a 5x7 image. Our image is bigger so we're going to be using these larger cups. You definitely want to wear gloves when you're doing this process and these really inexpensive ones seem to work quite well. The first step is to pour your resin, let's see, this is the resin. I'm going to pour that into this one ounce cup, put that into a plastic container, and then to make sure that the ingredients are done in a one-to-one -one ratio, and this is really important. Uh, if it's not exactly one-to-one, -one, your resin might not harden. I use one of these paper containers for each one, squeeze it out really well, and put that in the trash. And then make sure you pick up the hardener for the next one. And fill up your one ounce container. The resin hardener is a little bit thicker. I'm going to dump that into the container, squeeze out the paper cup. That's it. I'm going to stir this up. This takes three minutes of stirring to totally mix it. The next step is to cover the glass plate with a piece of aluminum foil. The reason I do that is that when I do the blazer flaming to eliminate the bubbles from the surface, I want to make sure that if I go off of the uh, substrate that I don't have anything that could ignite. I'll place my print on the uh, sheet of aluminum. Make sure that you've got the ink side up. So now I'm going to just pour this mixture right in the center. Use the back of the spoon to spread the resin and the hardener mixture across all the edges. You don't need to get off of the film, you want to just go up to the edge of the image on the film. This is spreading this to be about an eighth of an inch thick. Any more than that and the resin would just keep running and run off the edge of the table. So I have figured out that this amount is just perfect. Whether you're doing resin coating for this lift image 
or if you're going to resin coat, um, let's say a Wonder Sauce transfer, then you would use the same amount of resin. Now this is looking pretty darn good. When you spread this, you're going to notice that there are bubbles that form, and the bubbles are from the mixing that you did. And we don't want to have those bubbles in our finished piece. Uh, this is a small micro torch. It's the type of thing you could use to uh, make a souffle. We're going to light that. Turn the flame down just a little bit. And always make sure you don't have any flammable things laying around your tabletop when you're doing this. Gently brush, not brush, wave across the surface and you will watch the bubbles being uh, dispersed. When your blazer is on, always keep your eyes on the flame. If you want to look at it at an angle and see whether the bubbles all, are all broken, turn it off. I've had people who bend down and they forget this is lit and then they're pointing it at something that could be flammable. Turn off the blazer and then I look at it, I make sure that it is off. If you're doing this in the classroom, I always like to have people uh, do the blazing in a buddy system so one person is always watching the flame and the person who's doing it doesn't get distracted and do something wrong. So that's the extent of what we need to do. This now needs to cure for 24 hours. After 24 hours, we're going to be able to pull this off of the plastic and have a uh, image encased in the resin. We're going to wait now 24 hours before we remove this from the film. And if you wait longer than 24 hours, you may not be able to get it off of the film. If you do it too soon, say after 12 or 16 hours, you may end up having some of the ink stay on the film and not fully transfer to the image. Now I have already done uh, another one, so I'm gonna just set this forward out of the way. This is one that I left on here for much longer than 24 hours. And you can see that what happened is that it's, it's tearing and breaking because it won't release. And that's why you don't want to go past that 24 hour period. And this is the cuff that I shaped. I cut it with scissors around the edges. Uh, while it's soft, I was able to press the two ends together and they do stay pretty much stuck. I painted the inside with Golden's Interference Green acrylic paint so that I could actually see the dragon. And I shaped it to fit over my wrist. This is another shape that I've made. Uh, I used a little bit thicker pour of the acrylic resin. Uh, for this one, it's just simply an abstract uh, pattern that I photographed uh, of water flowing over rocks. Then I shaped the piece. This then can be displayed as a slumped form uh, in a deep frame.